Well, uh, I would like to welcome everyone here. I'm Council Gary, talk. the Chair of Community Resources. I can't talk. Um, we can mute everyone, sorry. Yeah. And I would like to call to order the Community Resources meeting of August 21st, 2023. Laura, roll call, please. Councilor Perry. Here. Councilor Elkins. Here. Councilor Jarrett. Here. And Councilor Mayori. Here. All right. Um, just to let everyone know that this meeting is being audio and video recorded. Um, and with that being said, moving along, we are going to move to public comment. If there's any public who wants to make a comment, now is your time. Uh, you can raise your hand, or turn on your camera, and I'll recognize you. I don't see anyone from the public here. No. Going once, going twice. All right, uh, that moves us to the next item, which is the minutes of our previous meeting. Thank you, Laura, for putting these forward. Uh, I have to say again, it was nice to look over them and see some of our work. There's a lot of information in there. So that was great. Uh, but I would accept a motion to accept these minutes. I move to approve. Second. All right, Laura Ropal. Oh, you're muted. Councillor Perry. Yes. Councillor Elkins. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. And Councillor Mayori. Yes. Thank you, everybody. And that moves us to the next item, which is updates and announcements from committee members. Do we have any? I have something. Councillor Elkins. When we get to announcements in the next council meeting and we want to say something about this meeting, I want to make the announcement so that I can be the one to say that we literally heard about the state of Northampton Farms from somebody in a tractor. <laughs> that's, that's my announcement. <laughs> I want, I call dibs. <laughs> Go for it. All right. That is, a, that is allowable. Well, I'll make an announcement. I think that through the hard work of Councilor Elkins, that we're going to have our initial meeting for the select committee uh, to study racialized harms this coming Thursday. So, oh. looking forward to that. Thank you for that, Council Elkins and Laura. Okay. Thank you for your hard work too. I think we have to went around one last corner and get it posted. But yes, I, I think uh, I think as we can as long as we confirm a quorum, that's correct. And now, uh, if no further announcements or updates from you guys, uh, let's move to the to the meat of this meeting. And we are so lucky to have some of the members of the Agric Agricultural Commission here to just give a brief update on the state of Northampton Farms. So I would like to turn it over to whoever wants to represent or speak first. John, John, John is our chairman, so it would be maybe appropriate. <laughs> Well, I mean, I live out in the western section, so I'm up in gravel. So the rain has actually been sort of beneficial for me as opposed to last year when it didn't. Uh, Chip, <laughs> you're down in a meadow, so you're the ones that really got hammered. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I don't go down there because I don't own land there. So, yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're down in the Northampton Meadows below the airport and below 91. And, uh, you know, it doesn't make any difference whether you're, a, you know, a community garden or a big, bigger farm. There's been a lot of water damage for a lot of people this year, and um, our for our own our own outfit, we we probably lost 80 acres of corn and about 10 acres of oats, and the some of the potato outfits and other corn growers lost even more acreage than that. But uh, but I say it doesn't make any difference whether you're big, small, or medium. There's been uh, tremendous water damage this year. So. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. OK. I just want to make sure. Chip? Uh, yeah. Um, could, I, could I just add to that, Chip? This is Richard Jasky. Yeah, another, me another member. I, 
I also own land down in the meadows and um, I lost, uh, I didn't, I don't have the acreage that the big growers have, uh, but I did lose about three and a half acres of hay out of uh, a, a big parcel that I don't even know if I can harvest it because of the pathogens from the uh, river, uh, from the sewage treatment plants above our our uh, land. Um, I'd, I'd like I'd like to make a point, um, and, and this is something that we've been dealing with in this commission for a long time. And this is the stormwater management fee. Uh, <clears throat> why would you institute a fee, uh, especially to people farming in the meadows, when, as you just heard, um, Pip and Parsons Farm, and I could Goulet, Allard Farm, Swazlowski Potato Farm, plus uh, other farmers down there that have lost, just lost a lot of money. They've lost their fertilizer. They've lost their machine time. They've lost their labor. And uh, just plain, you know, taking a pretty good beating. Why would you put a fee? In other words, they, they've got nothing to harvest. And then uh, there, here's your stormwater management fee, uh, which you're going to pay. They've already sacrificed. They've lost everything uh, that they, uh, you know, they haven't lost everything, but they've lost a substantial part of what they planted. And um, and then they have to pay a fee on top of it all. I I think we were recommended to uh, to meet with you people on this Zoom uh, link to make a point about this. It's a fifteen million dollar loss up and down the valley here for farmers who don't need any more low interest loans. They just simply need uh, money to to function and. Um, and also, I, I want to be honest, the, the fee is not a huge amount of money, but in all essence, it's just plain wrong. Uh, why would you do this, you know, to somebody who's vulnerable uh, as it is, plus they grow our food? Really, that's the point I want to make. And uh, I, I'd, I'd like you to think about that. I'm sorry, I didn't catch the, the name of, of who was speaking. Uh, Richard, Richard Jeske, uh, J-A-E, S as in Steve, C as in Charles, K-E. But I'm vice chair, John's chair, I'm, I'm vice chair. Richard, okay. Hi, Richard, this is uh, Marissa Elkins, uh, counselor at large. And you know something, Marissa, I'm on the seat of a tractor up here on uh, Bottoms Road in, uh, <laughs> in the Bay State section of Northampton, so there you go, how's that? Right, two, two reporting live from tractors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. His, his tractors are Ford, mine's a John Deere. So, <laughs> yeah, just not that it makes any difference. Uh, I, I'm sure it makes a huge difference. I just don't know what it what difference it makes. <laughs> I'm not the one who knows. Um, oh. I, I would like to ask a question, uh, Richard, or anybody who can ask this. Um, has has have have there been any discussions with the mayor's office? Um, about relief from the fee being maybe part of the response? Has that been broached at all, or is this just sort of generally talked well, about? We're going to be meeting with the mayor uh, September 12th. We have informally, and I, and I think it's probably more our fault, that we've informally asked the mayor to come to a meeting. Uh, mayor Narkowitz, before, uh, before Mayor Sierra, um, and, and haven't really pursued it, but <clears throat> we certainly are because um, I, I think it's a matter of, of morals. It, the purpose of our agricultural commission is to support and promote agriculture in the city of Northampton. Why would you have a fee on vulnerable land uh, if you support agriculture, you know? Um, <clears throat> and again, I mean, I, I, it, it, in all honesty, it's not a huge amount of money, but it, it's just a fact of the matter. And again, we'll, we'll make this point with the mayor, but uh, uh, I know you're the resources committee. I assume that uh, part of your job is to determine uh, what uh, resources the city needs to function, this being one of them, the stormwater fee. But um, 
I know Charlie Jasinski in particular lost a big chunk of corn. I mean, I think he grows 80 acres of corn, maybe 100, but he lost a huge, a huge amount down there. And there's no getting it back. Okay. Um, I have another question just to follow up um, to anybody who can answer. Um, I I was at the tour of the farms, Grow Food Northampton um, when Joe Comerford and um, representative from the, I forget the name of the department at the state level, the agricultural um, response um, down there. Have, can, is there anybody who can report on anything that's beginning to come in in terms of resources and um, response to the losses um, from the floods? From the state I, level I, or, or federal either to uh, anything. I don't think I think I, uh, th there's money, whatever the 20 million the state has out there. And then I think they haven't figured out quite yet how they're going to proceed with applications, I guess. Or if, if that whole thing, I think, still needs to be figured out. And then the resiliency fund, they're having a meeting tonight at, uh, I can't remember, a, a brewery somewhere. And I think some of the, um, uh, politicians are going to be there, and 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 I, I don't think they are sure how they're going to disperse money. Also, so um, the uh, the Grinspoon Fund, which is a a, a fund that uh, farmers can apply to small grants uh, during the year, they they had their own money, and they. They took applications and they they awarded, you know, small amounts very very quickly. I mean, they 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 did a lot in a short time. But I don't I don't know, you know, if if uh, there's there's still plenty of people, like I say, big and small, that need, you know, some some help. And and we don't want to pit size against each other either, because uh, the the smaller uh, gardens and and those things are very important to people so like i say it's not not size doesn't matter in, in this deal so that's my two cents I, I i think what what what's going to be necessary is come winter time i mean a lot of these my wife runs a uh, farm stand up on bridge road and um right now um <clears throat> she can't find any peppers any uh uh, cucumbers, the corn situation is, is pretty much exhausted. A lot of your squashes uh, that a lot of these farmers rely on in the wintertime for peeling and then selling uh, wholesale, um, they could be non-existent. Uh, so it's going to be the wintertime and, and also starting next spring when they need seed money to get going again, that is really going to make the difference. And um, you know, I, I think like Chip says, it, it's probably going to take a little time to sort all this out. Uh, but these guys are hurting and they are really hurting. Uh, they're, they're hurting real good. You know, it's not a not a fun thing here. I had a question about um, you'd mentioned <clears throat> trouble with contaminants. Uh, when, when right. Uh, I know you, you obviously don't know every farm, but what is going to be the impact for, for farms like that? Uh, will that land be usable in the future? Or do you, I, I'm very curious what the process is and how we deal with um, mitigating I that. I would refer to that. I, I can add to that, but I think Chip would know, uh, would be able to, I think, wouldn't you, Chip? Do you, do you have a little more info uh, on that? Yeah, but probably not the best answers either. I, I mean, I think the if there were any crops that had contaminant on it, you know now they're obviously not going to harvest them and get them into the food chain and then uh probably most of them the land would be all right you know next planting season i mean they'll probably put a cover crop on and and then plow that under in the spring and and whatnot but uh if even stuff you know if you had water on it and it, the product looked all right most you know people are not not getting that into the food chain they're they're they've they've lost that so but there's 
there may be a better procedure than what I know also. What what I what I've heard too, Chip, is um, <clears throat> maybe just a little more detail, if I'm not mistaken here. What the what happens is the uh, as the storms hit up north, they over overwhelm the sewage treatment plants, and they had a discharge into the river. Uh, of course, the contaminants are you know pretty volatile, and uh, the even though, like Chip said, your your plant might not have been uh, underwater. If that plant ingests any of that water into itself, then you know eventually, in, in the case of corn, um, it'll go up into the possibly going up into the kernels. So you're, if you're a dairy farm or anything like it, and you and you feed your animals that product, that animal, uh, of course, produces milk, and of course, it uh, eventually ends up in our food chain. So um, I guess there is a test they can do. I've heard uh, initially, and then they can test it 10 days later. And if it does test uh, negative, then they can harvest. Um, I, Chip, have you heard of that? Uh, about I, that? Yeah, I think I think you're right, Rich. I, I I haven't, you know, I haven't seen it done, or I don't know anybody that's actually had it done. But I'm I believe I've heard that before too. So, so. I mean, uh, on the but, other side of the river. The Barstow farm, for one of the biggest dairy farms in the area, I mean, they lost, I'm pretty sure without a doubt, that they lost a huge amount of their corn because it's right down by the river, uh, especially on the South Hadley, at Route 47 South uh, on the Hadley uh, side of the river. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that they're going to be trying to figure a way to feed their animals. And, of course, it's costly because then you have to buy buy in product uh, and the margins in, in any kind of farming today are so slim um, that, um, you know, it really makes it uh, pretty difficult, you know? Yeah. And it, I mean, it, it's a local problem and a regional problem, of course, because it ran all the way up into Vermont and, and, and right. you know, from there down our way. So it, it, it's not not only our area, it's a real regional type uh, problem up and down the Connecticut River Valley. So, and I, and I know. For sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. Uh, so, and Richard, so you were specifically mentioning. Do you know is is most of the corn grown locally um, feed corn or for retail sale? Well, there's there's a lot of it for. Uh, well, don't forget, there's there's two types of corn. There's the corn you'd harvest uh, as silage. Um, <clears throat> which you'd feed your cows in, in, in a supplementary fashion. You'd, you'd make a, a, I forget what they call it, total digestible nutrients, TDN. They have mixer wagons and they big feed in so much silage and so much uh, supplements, whether it be, uh, oh God, I don't know, Chip, you, you might know uh, an example, but um, you know that, that would be more for a dairy farm. Then you've got your people that harvest like Chip, in Parsons Farm, they harvest the cob and they go for the shell corn, which is great feed for their operation, which is, uh, you know, small animals and such. Um, and then you've got your sweet corn growers and the sweet corn, corn growers that really devastated, especially in the Aquavita area in Hadley. And uh, even in the Northampton Meadows, I think Carl Swazlowski, uh isn't that right, Chip? Doesn't he grow yeah. some corn? Yeah, right. So yeah, they have yeah they have a bunch right down here right. near where I, where I'm sitting on the tractor, and they they lost some due to the water. So yeah, and, and and it's not the fact that he was near the river, and uh, and it's not the fact that uh, there's any pathogens. It's just that the plant becomes can't the roots can't get any oxygen because there's so much water. If you look, if you look down on the rainbow section where I've got land, the potatoes got completely swamped. They, I don't believe they, they got flooded. Uh, some of them did, but of course, what happens to the formation of that potato? Well, that potato is, yeah. is pretty much done, you know. They, yeah, they lost beyond beyond you, Rich. They, they lost over a hundred acres. They, they harrowed it up already. They, they can't, they uh, can't touch touch it. So, you know, it, it, nutrient, yeah. your, your big fertilizer companies like Nutrient Ag up in South Deerfield and your and your seed suppliers, I mean, they've got their money, they're paid, they're all set. But the guys, you know, you, you put your 
You put everything out in front of me, you put everything out there. You're not hiding everything. Yeah. It's all right out in the open. You know, I mean, your whole, yeah. your whole life, everything you've got is out there. Right. And you're just praying right. to God that Mother Nature will work with you. Yeah. I, I, I have to get off, but I mean, I don't think anybody's looking for, for pity or anything. We're just trying to point out some of the seriousness of, you know, what has overtaken the area this year and, 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 you know, just so people can be a little better on informed on what's going on. That's all. So. Um, I, I'm, I'm with you, Chip. I, I've got to probably, I've got to get down to the meadows and catch some hay uh, myself. Uh, and um, the, the thrust of what we wanted to say is, um, is this, is the, is the state of what we know of. Uh, we're not, you know, we're not on the, on the national level, like uh, Representative McGovern or, or Warren or Markey, but we're we're local, and uh, these these guys have got hurt and hurt really bad because it hit at a wrong time. And um, you know, again, that this this fee that these guys are getting, um, it's really not a not a, a real pleasant thing, you know, yeah, at all. For sure, you know. But, I wanted to speak uh, to that right before, just before you leave, just to make sure, because, you know, Councilor Moulton and uh, I met with you, at, yeah. uh, I think it was last year, and we talked about bringing uh, the stormwater fee up to Council, and I think you heard this, but just, just so you know, when we talked to the mayor, the mayor uh, said that they were, you know, they were just about to start this kind of basically an equity study about stormwater fees, and so we've been waiting to get that back and we've of course as counselors will have a lot of pointed questions about about farms and especially in the new light of of what's happened so that's what i wanted you just to, to be reassured that we are going to be we're waiting for that to come to the council to have a conversation with that data in front of us but we have not forgotten and I, I'm, oh. thank you so much for joining us well, i wish you yeah, under better circumstances the, the thing, yeah. one last one last thing here that we are a commission that advises you guys city council and the mayor and our purpose is to support and promote agriculture like i said before we have been pounding our head against the wall about this thing for pretty much nine years trying to do it in a very nice way but also trying to get you guys to understand the way we see it so please listen to us and really do some thinking about it yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank, yeah, thank you for hearing our two cents. Oh, no, of yeah. course, we're we're very grateful for the, the, the time uh, when you're obviously very, very busy. Uh, I, I would also just add one more thing, too. I, I'm very interested, and I know I think speak for all the counselors on this committee and also generally, we're all going to be very interested to hear I, I want to understand if 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 communication is going well from the state and federal sources that are as they begin to respond to this. Um, I I know they responded to come see and started talking about things right afterwards, but I I I'm, I really I really want feel free. Please let us know if communication is not going well. If you're not getting clear information about um what resources are going to be available and that that's what you're hearing from other folks i mean we the council um you know we can only do so much but we also have relationships with our you know legislator uh, legislators and and within things we're interested and and want to help if there is a way that we can um as as this these relief measures and responses um get rolling so so not at all. You should not at all feel like <laughs> anything other than you're. We absolutely want to hear what you have to say and and your two cents and how things are going. I I, I have sent an email to Jim McGovern. He he sent an email to probably everybody about this uh, farm situation. What's happened? And one of the things that I said, and I, I hope I didn't overstep my bounds, but. I said the city of Northampton should need need some help on the stormwater management thing. I mean, this is this is mandated by the feds. This is mandated by the city of Northampton, and he needs to step up to the plate on this to help the city. 
you know, I mean, that's part of his purvey, I think. And um, uh, I, I'd like to see the city council address him about this, you know? Yeah. Will, you, will you log me out so I don't say something I'm not supposed to? <laughs> <laughs> okay. it, you may say whatever you wish. No, <laughs> no, no. no. Thank, thank you. I am. I'm going to try and get off now. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. 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 Yeah, log um, and thank you very much for listening to us. We really appreciate it. And if we can be of help, you know how to get a hold of us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilor Jared. I saw your hand yeah, up. Yeah. Thank you. I definitely want to second what Councilor Elkins said that we want to hear from you all. Um, and. Thinking about the, the stormwater fee, you know, one of the, the requirements of a fee is that you receive something in return for it, uh, as opposed to a tax where you don't have to receive something. And um, you know, there have been some, some legal cases uh, about fees that I think that we, we need to, as we take, look at this in a new light, um, we'll have to consider, uh, <clears throat> consider that. Um, and I think that the DVW and the mayor will be looking at that as well. I think we're losing our farmers. Yeah, I'm not sure they heard my comments, but they're, uh, they're okay. looking hard. Uh, yeah. John. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm still here, but um, I mean, I was hanging this afternoon. And it turns out my allergies turned out to be a positive COVID test. So oh, I don't know how long oh, I'm going to no. stay here. <laughs> so it's a good thing this is a Zoom meeting. <laughs> Yeah. Hey. But I mean, I'm totally different from the rest of the farmers because they're down in the meadows, which is, you know, some of the best land in, in the country. And, you know, I'm out near West Hampton where basically one of our best crops are rocks and stones. So, I mean, I basically <laughs> grow hay and, you know, my son and his friend are growing small amounts of vegetables and different things and experimenting in that regard. But I mean, last year was a, a bigger detriment to me than than this year because i mean with the dry weather nothing happened <laughs> so i right, mean I, drought, I really yeah. don't you know the, these people hit in the meadows they own the land down there my philosophy is i don't want people walking on my property so i don't go down there just to poke around in, in their land so unfortunately a lot of people don't care about that and they just go driving around there everywhere so because that was always a a contention with us was the public's use or abuse of the the meadows hmm. i mean we've met with the police and everybody else so you know now now the weather's going out besides all the people so well i i live right down the street from the meadows my house <laughs> literally leads into the meadows and i've seen uh, many a folk driving uh mm -hmm. down there for recreational purposes and not farming so I mean, when we started the Ag Commission, I said, I don't even know what this is like. So my wife and I went down here in the winter and drove through and said, well, you know, this is what it is. <laughs> but other than that, you know, I figured it's their farmland. And... Sure. Well, I want to thank you for your time. I want to thank All right. you for hearing thank your you. stories. And, and I, I would honestly hope that we could do this more often in this community, yeah. maybe um, just for a check-in and, and to you make know, sure and, and, not, and not just because of dire needs, <laughs> just exactly. for communication purposes. Exactly. Uh, All right. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Yep. All right. Councilor Garrett. Yeah, we just asked uh, Tom as the staff person to the uh, Agriculture Commission if he had any comments um, or ways that we could you know, that we could stay connected um, yeah. better between the Ag Commission and the Council. Well, Rachel and Stan came to a meeting last fall, um, and I think it was Rachel's idea that there be an at least one annual kind of state of the Northampton farm or some sort of presentation to Council so that you all would be aware of just how the season was going, what are the challenges, what are the successes, this has been a brutal year. Um, and, and so I just want to thank Rachel and Stan for that idea. Um, and one of the things that may have gotten missed in the stormwater um, discussion was, you know, many members of AgCom have said several times, like, we don't mind 
paying the fee that other people and other businesses pay, but because our business is land intensive and be, and one of the things that seems to um, upset them the most is a, is say a barn or some large agricultural structure that drains onto farm land. So it does not drain onto a driveway that then goes into the road and then goes into the storm system. But when those are assessed at the higher rate, um, for the stormwater fee, I think that upsets a lot of them. And some of them have farms where road water drains onto their farm. And so they feel like the farms themselves provide stormwater services. And, you know, if they have a barn right by the road, then yeah, assess it with the stormwater fee. That makes sense. But if it's, if it's back from the, from the road, um, the way many of them are, and it drains onto farmland that then does not drain into the road system, they, they feel like they would like, um, you know, that assessment cut. Um, and so I just wanted to add that. And I, and they're aware that with the Coca-Cola leaving town, that it's, it's tough. It's, there's no easy decisions. There's a lot of money lost there. And so, um, they're not, you know, unaware of that fact. Thank you. I don't Thank know you. if that made sense, but yeah. Rachel? Thanks a lot for that, Tom. And I, I found it really engaging. And I, I hope to encourage, you know, the new counselors in January to to do uh, to come to a meeting and just to just to be familiar uh, with it. And so that would be part part of the boot camp we're designing for them. But I was just gonna add, yeah, I mean, that's the thing about the stormwater. I mean, what I hear and what we Council Moulton and I heard last year was like it really is like the principle of it not feeling supported in that way. And yeah. it'll be a really engaging conversation because um, my residents on Sylvester Road who aren't necessarily farmers, although there are farmers, I mean they they don't like the fee because they feel like they're they're they have a lot of acreage and it's like they're filtering water for the city. So that's an interesting perspective. Yeah. I mean that yeah. like their particular land is actually kind of doing a service. So, I mean, certainly the fee is not uh, sensitive to these things. And so I think that's going to be a, a real unpacking. And it's actually going to be, I think it's going to end up being a rather technical conversation about like how storm water gets, because I hadn't thought of people with a lot of acreage with a lot of like rocks and, you know, that they're actually filtering water. So, um, so I think that the, the plan should be when we're, you know, we'll get an update from the mayor about that study. And then will let you know tom and you know when it's when it's going to come up that conversation is going to come up so that the ag commission doesn't feel left out of that conversation does that sound that would be great okay. and is that study going to be publicly available or is it kind of in-house i it should be what do you what laura would know for sure right do you think laura you know the study they're doing on the i think it'll be just like any other uh study would be public absolutely it'll be, it'll be on the commons it will be attached to the agenda, I'm sure. Yeah. Totally. Okay. Yeah. Do you happen to know, Laura? Do you remember when? I just don't remember when they said um, that study might be, you know, coming back. Yeah, I was it. wondering the same thing. I think we have to check. I think I'm confusing it with the, um, the audit. And we have a lot of studies going on. We've got the <laughs> municipal broadband. So I think I don't know the, the. So we'll find that's the first thing to do is find out the time frame for the study and then get back to you all. Right. Great. And um, Fred, uh, one other just little tidbit here is that Fred Badal, who uh, is an organic berry farmer in the, in, in the um, meadows, he had two acres completely underwater for five days. Um, and he, but he did get a Grinspoon grant um, that is really helping with um, recovering financially from that loss. So I just wanted to, you know, acknowledge the Grinspoon Foundation. And um, and report what he told me. He couldn't be here tonight because he's he's selling um, flowers. It's it's the hours for his farm right now. But he wanted to be here. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Seriously, thank you for everyone who was able to attend and the people who were here in spirit as well. And for um, the work. <laughs> I just the work, the work you guys do. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Well, thank you so much. Um, and uh, I hope to talk to you all soon. All right. Okay, thank you. Great evening. Bye-bye. Feel better. Thank you. All right. Well, that was a nice discussion. It was quick, brisk. <laughs> <laughs> Say that for farmers. They get right to the point. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I really do. As a person who works a lot, I like it. Um, so there are no items referred to committee. Um, 
I don't have any new business. Does anyone have any new business to bring up? That leaves us at our move to adjourn. Move second. Thank you, Councillor Elkins. Council Elkins. Oh. Councillor Elkins. Yes. Um, Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Mayori. Yes. And Councillor Perry. Yes. <laughs>